happy Easter rice. I hope that you are enjoying your Easter and you've enjoyed all the yummy treats that you've probably got today and that you are also enjoying the school holidays. Yay! I know I'm really looking forward to the holidays. I'm sure you are too. Now I wonder if you know why we have all of these yummy treats today on Easter Sunday. Why we have chocolate eggs and why there are lots of chicks and daffodils and bunnies and all the other things that we see at Easter time. Now we're going to look at the story of Easter and the first Easter today. And in one of the videos below, you can choose to watch how you watch that story. I'm sure a lot of you already know it, but it's always good to remind ourselves of the Easter story. I've been reading the Easter story again this year, and there's so many more things that God has reminded me all about this year. So it'd be really great for you to choose a story, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit about it. So when you're ready, three, two, one. Off you go. So last week, last Sunday, was Palm Sunday and that was a Sunday when we welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem, when the crowds were really pleased to see Jesus and they were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But that all changed quite quickly. And we remember that on um, the Thursday, which we call Maundy Thursday, is that day when Jesus had a very special meal with his friends, with his disciples. And that meal is called a Passover meal. And that's a very important thing for Jewish people. And it still is really important now. And they would have celebrated it um, on the Thursday just gone, just before Easter. So it's really important. But while they're at this Passover meal, we remember that Jesus took the bread and the wine. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you, which is broken for you. And this cup, this wine, is my blood, which is poured out for you. And at that time, the disciples probably wasn't quite sure what was going on. But Jesus knew that one of the disciples was going to betray him. And that happened with Judas. And Judas came and he told the Roman guards where to find Jesus for the cost of 30 silver coins. Which might not sound very much to us. It's about £150. But in those days, that would have been a fair amount of money. And um, something I've learned yesterday is that 30 silver coins is how much in the Old Testament they would have paid for a slave. So that's quite an interesting fact if you want to know an interesting fact. Anyway, so Jesus was taken and he was put on trial and they said that he was saying things against God and saying that he was the king of the Jews. Now we know that this is true, that Jesus came to be the king for all of us and he is our king. But then that was not something that people wanted to hear Jesus saying. So they put him on trial and they decided they were going to crucify him and kill him. And that happened on Good Friday. Jesus was sentenced to death. He had to carry his cross up the hill and there he was killed on a place called Golgotha which means the place of the skull. And you've seen all this in the video already. And on that place, Jesus died. But that's not the end. Jesus died and then he was put in, an, in a tomb. And a tomb is where you put people when they die, when you bury, where they used to bury people, often on the side of a hill. And on two days later, on the Sunday, Mary came and Martha came to... Um, help finish getting Jesus's body ready to be buried and they got there and the stone was rolled away and they went in and the tomb was empty and there was an angel who said why are you looking for the living among the dead and then Jesus appeared to Mary in the garden Mary didn't recognize him she thought he was the gardener and she said where have you put him but all Jesus had to say to Mary was Mary just had to say her name and she knew it was him and that is amazing news because this story shows that even though Jesus died death couldn't hold him down he is stronger than death and that he came so that we can have new life with God and we'll, when we, we call this the resurrection it means that Jesus came back to life from the dead 
and today on Easter Sunday we remember that Jesus has risen. We say he is risen and that is a really exciting thing because it shows us that even though Jesus came to die so that we can be friends with God, it also tells us that death is not the end, that death doesn't hold us down because death didn't hold God down. That doesn't mean that when people die in this world, we're going to come back to life again in this world and have people that have died walking back around. That doesn't often happen. Very rarely happens, actually. It doesn't happen at all. Um, at, but when we die, we can go to be friends with God. We can go to have a relationship with God in heaven. And that is an amazing thing for us to know and to remember. And that is why the story of Easter is so important. So why do we have daffodils and chicks and bunnies and Easter eggs and all those things? Or well, daffodils and chicks and bunnies and lambs and all the animals that we see at this time are often born at this time of year, the spring. And that reminds us of new life. And that's about the new life that we can have with Jesus. And eggs also hold new life, don't they? They are where baby chickling, chicklings, baby chicks are before um, they hatch, where they, where the, the chickens birth the eggs and then the eggs hatch. Yeah, you know, you know all of that. I'm not doing very well at telling you, am I? But um, the eggs, when we get chocolate eggs, chocolate is good. And chocolate, I think chocolate's good anyway. And chocolate reminds us of the new life that we have with Jesus and how important that is. And often the Easter eggs that we get are empty. They are hollow in the middle. And that reminds us of the empty tomb, of when Mary and Martha went to that tomb and found Jesus' body was not there. It was empty because he has risen. And that's a great thing for us to remember and that's why we celebrate Easter. So let's pray and thank Jesus for what he did for us at Easter. Jesus, thank you that you came. Thank you that you came so that we can have a relationship with God. We can have a friendship with God and a friendship with you. And thank you that you came for us. Thank you that your death on the cross is so that we can be forgiven of all of those things that we did wrong and so that we can be friends with you and friends with God without having to do lots and lots of other things as well. Thank you that it's simple, that you love us and that we know that we are forgiven. And thank you, God, Jesus, for what you did three days later. Thank you for your death and for your resurrection. Thank you for that empty tomb and that you remind us that death cannot hold you down, that you beat death and you overcome it for us for the sake of this world again so we can have a relationship with you and so we know that when people we love die or when we um, die because we love you we will go and live with you forever in heaven and that is the best news ever thank you for all of this Jesus and thank you for all the yummy things that we get to celebrate and all the symbols that lovely symbols that we have to remind you of all of this that we use today amen now, I'm going to have a couple of weeks off, so I will see you again very soon. If you want to watch any other videos while we're off, there are lots of videos you can buy, um, find, buy, you can find on YouTube. You can use the um, channels of some of the videos that I've shared, or maybe look for Saddleback Kids. They are really good. They're often the ones that I really like with the funny noses. Um, yeah. So I hope that you have a really lovely couple of weeks, a really lovely Easter, and I will see you all very, very soon. Bye-bye.